Now let's learn about memory mapped I.O. and a little bit about how the BIOS sets up the configuration for the memory map in general. So in Architecture 2001, we talked about physical address spaces, linear address spaces, virtual address spaces. And originally we talked about how if paging isn't enabled, linear addresses map directly to, to physical addresses. And then we talked about how page tables meant that you could translate a particular linear address to a different physical address. Now in this description of how someone would access physical memory, we talked about how, you know, someone could say, well, give me linear address FFFF000, and it would translate through page tables, but let's say that it was identity mapped, and it would go through, and then we would expect this to access RAM at FFFF000, right? Well, RTFM has determined that was a lie. So, the reality is we've already seen that that FFFF0000 range actually maps to the spy flash chip. So that goes through, goes through a page table, and instead of accessing RAM, what you're doing is you're doing memory mapped I.O. And in this particular case, this particular address will translate through to accesses to the spy flash chip, but also in the same range, you could have other peripherals, such as network cards, graphic cards, other devices on PCIe, or other internal devices. So memory map I.O. is one of the two types of I.O., port I.O., which we saw in Architecture 2001, and memory mapped I.O. And so fundamentally what you're doing when you're doing either of these types of I.O. is you're accessing something other than the CPU. You're accessing something other than RAM, at least your normal DRAM that you think of. In the context of a BIOS, you're using assembly instructions to access these spaces, and while things like port I.O. or the particular memory ranges that are mapped to peripherals would usually be restricted to ring zero only in a normal operating system, obviously when the system is just first starting out, there's no ring privilege separation, and so real mode can just go right through. So let's talk a little bit about the memory map. This is the idea that it turns out the physical address range is not exclusively mapped to physical RAM. It can be mapped to these other peripherals. And so when the system first starts up, the only thing it actually knows about is this upper range that is always, by hardware, defaulted to map to the spy flash chip on modern systems. This is sometimes called the boot block, and it's going to be a 512 byte range, kilobyte range of memory that is going to map to the very end of the spy flash chip. If you watched the optional material on the BIOS secret decoder ring, you saw a little bit about how the hardware mapped this, and it further mapped some additional space down below it to other chunks of the spy flash. So if this is all the BIOS knows about when it's first getting started, then that means that the BIOS needs to configure a whole bunch of other stuff in order to understand what's where in memory. It effectively has to play Tetris with a number of different areas of memory, all of which have their own various rules and usages. It's essentially doing Tetris to kind of fill in this area of memory. Yeah, so that's the BIOS's job, to basically fill in this memory and understand what's mapped where. Make sure things don't overlap, because that can cause very strange and potentially security-relevant behavior. So then poor Gilgamesh, who paid many bushels of wheat for his 8 gigabytes of RAM back in the day, well, he wants to access that RAM, right? He doesn't want to actually lose that memory to this memory-mapped I.O. region. And so Intel has a solution for that, which is this very complicated looking diagram. But in order to make it simpler, let's use this diagram from an Invisible Things Labs talk. They actually used this to attack. It turns out that there are a couple of registers that can be used to map a chunk of RAM that is otherwise stolen from the physical address space by memory mapped I.O. You take this chunk of RAM and you map it where these memory registers specify. Now they used it to overlap with system management mode in order to break past some access controls. But in this context, let's just think about its intended usage, which is taking this chunk of physical RAM, mapping it somewhere else so that an operating system can use it.